Let's turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. We'll just read um, a couple of verses and pray and then you may be seated. Colossians chapter 1. We're continuing our our study on the book of Colossians. Uh, just for this Sunday, then we'll move on to something next Sunday and we'll come back to it. But I think um, it's important to continue. Um, so Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to do to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god let's bow our heads in prayer heavenly father lord we thank you father for another time lord here to lift up your name, Father, and to lift up your word. And Father, to read your word. We thank you, Father, for giving us your word, inerrant, perfect. And Father, we pray our hearts and minds be ready to receive your word and you bless it to our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, just for a recap, so um, in Colossians chapter 1, Uh, we spoke last week about, uh, in verse 2, uh, Paul and Timothy writing to the saints and faithful brethren. And we spoke about that means nothing if it's not in Christ. We spoke about verse 3, how they were giving thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. So Paul, Paul and Timothy were always praying for the um, Church of Colossae. And... Um, they're a pretty good church. Like they're not like Corinthian church where we'll get to the first and second Corinthians um, in the future next year, God willing. But um, Colossians is it's a pretty enjoyable, you know, church. It's a it's a nice epistle. Everything's great. And um, but they but Paul was still directing them and giving them instruction. See, he didn't he didn't say, look, you're pretty good. You don't need any more. Um, good on you, go ahead. He still gave them through the Holy Spirit. He still gave them instruction and what and, and a guiding of what to do. And we can learn from that. And so he's pretty happy in verse three. Everything's good since we and then verse four, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. So they got faith in Christ and of the love which he have to all, to all the saints. So they've got love in Christ Jesus. They've got the faith in Christ Jesus. They've got the love. Unto all the saints. They've got all that. They've got the hope which is laid up for you in verse 5. For the hope that is laid up for you in heaven. Whereof ye heard before in the word of, of the truth of the gospel. So they were, they've got all that. They've, they've been listening to the word. They've been um, through Epaphras, who is the fellow servant, uh, he gave them feedback. So before we get there, verse 6, um, he mentions that they have fruit. The church of Colossae has fruit too. So it's all it's all well and good. Um, and verse 7, so Epaphras re reported back, verse 8, he declared unto Paul that they have, who also declared unto us, your love in the Spirit. So he could have, really just uh ended it there and said you know you're all well and good good luck to you but we still have a few chapters that paul and timothy are writing to them and you know a lot of it is repetitive and we'll get to that in a bit the, my point is i went through a stage as growing as a christian uh, where i went to church and i thought is that it like all right we've, i know all that can we talk about something else you know, and I went through a stage where I started thinking that it was the same thing all the time. But because I was still growing as a Christian, I wasn't picking up on uh, that 
there is still something to learn, even though from face value, it sounds like it's the same thing. And we're going to see, like, the New Testament is a lot about uh, the Christian character and the Christian walk and flesh and walk in the spirit. It's a, it, there's a lot of repetitiveness to that. If you look deeper, you always see something that you need. I hear messages of salvation today, and we all know salvation, but I still hear something that, oh, yeah, I need to use that. That's a good one. I'll use this. Sometimes the whole sermon, 50 minutes, Pastor Jason goes, an hour, an hour and a half. <laughs> my my uh, Bible, uh, some of the lessons in uh, Bible college is three hours. Three hours. And sometimes I'm behind, so I've got to do three hours and another three hours. It's six hours. And so this is all good training. You go to the gym to have good training. And if you just take it from face value, face value, you might hear and you might miss a lot of things that we need as Christians. And so we we don't we don't want to think that. And that, that's my point here. Paul is writing to them and they're pretty good. Sounds pretty good for a New Testament church. And he's still here in verse 9, as we get to verse 9, there's still much to do. Uh, before we start on verse 9, while we're on the subject, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll just go to one of the verses. I've got about three, but I want to I want to try and get to verse 17 today, which would be probably a miracle. But 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. There's repetitive, see? We always put in people in remembrance of these things. So if he doesn't put them in remembrance, that means Paul is being negligent, yeah? It's sometimes good to take the verse and read it backwards. Wherefore, I will not be negligent of these things. Uh, negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though ye know them. They already know. See that? They already know what he, he's talking about. And, and be established in the present truth. So let's read that again. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truths. So they're established, and Paul already knows that they know about these things. And he's still telling them, I know you already know it. I know you, you, you're established, but you still need to hear it. Verse 14 knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Do not forget, he's saying. He's saying you always have to have these in remembrance, no matter if you think that uh, you already know it. Let's go back to uh, Colossians chapter 1. So, be careful, uh, and I need to be careful too, not not to hear a sermon or hear a message, hear a message that um, I've heard this, I know this, I don't need this, this is for someone else. There's always something in there for us, and that's biblical. Okay, so verse 9, so verse 8, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, verse 9, for this cause. So Paul's saying, because you have the love of the Spirit, and because you have faith in Christ Jesus, and because all of from one to, to eight, yeah, bring forth fruit, uh, heard it. Um, because of this, since the day we heard it, so verse 9, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, since the day we got a report from it, since the very first day, do not cease to pray for you. So Paul didn't stop praying for the church of Colossae, even though they sound like they're fine. 
because you know why it's so easy to fall very quick to fall but it's harder it's hard to get up it's, it's not easy to get back up after a fall and many Christians fall and they don't get back up and so this is why it's so important important for us to pray for each other just like Paul Timothy prayed for the church of Colossae even though they sound fine so and he's saying because of this because of because you're so good you need more prayer because the, the enemy's coming so you need you need extra and from the first day he heard it they did not cease to pray for them shame on me yeah because that's a good reminder for us is that what is that what we have done from the first day you heard of something you did not cease every day probably he's saying not cease to pray I mean, every day and every hour that him i need thee every hour every since from the first day till now he didn't they didn't stop uh praying for them so i need work in that area see because i haven't, I haven't done that so i need i need more work, work in that area and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will see that desire do we have a desire for other christians to grow better yet do we have a desire for people to get saved not only just to witness but while i'm witnessing do i have a desire for that person to trust and believe in christ jesus you've got to do this you're missing out same with the christian you've got to get this paul many times in the new testament christian fellow christian you have got to get this you're missing out on a life more abundant not just a life jesus said i've come to give life give it more abundantly so people like we said before not coming here not being involved uh, i'm not saying the church is the savior i'm saying jesus christ is the savior but not living for jesus brings miserable you can be a miserable christian save them on the way to heaven and so their desire fall on timothy our desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will what's that how do we get his will what god wants me to do how he wants me to live what to avoid what to do more of what to do less of where do we get that from the, the word of god you know that's repetitive too now i'm putting us in remembrance you've you've got to be filled with the knowledge and that's my desire with the knowledge of his will we don't just make up a will uh, of god so we don't just say oh the door was open that means god wants me to enter no that's that's not we've got to we've got to check first we've got to check by his will see this from genesis to revelations this is god's will no one's going to change it revelation is going to happen no one's going to change that but as far as i go as far as i go not every opportunity is from god i had an opportunity to earn double the pay at one stage of of my work it didn't mean that ah oh, that that's an opening for god let's go take it it took all my time i had no time for anything else so it doesn't necessarily mean if you're able to do something or a door's open god wants you to take it sometimes it's not that's not the case so so paul and timothy want them to be filled with the knowledge of god's will because that way and you're not going to get that from tv hollywood or worldly music you know you're not going to get that anyway they they they, they hate they god haters they they hate god so we're not we're not going to get it from there so how about we start with less of that and more of bible see i know i sound like a parent to the kid but you've got to read your bible it's it's there's no other way i wish it was yeah you've got to read at school my mum would know i always used to take the easy way yeah we'd get a novel and i turn to the back and i read the, the, the back it's the, or I'll find a movie back then there wasn't many movies there is no other way but you know what the more you fight the flesh and the more you put effort 
uh, it starts becoming like what me and Joe were talking about yesterday. It starts becoming like if you don't do it, there's something missing. There's something not right. Just like we were talking about training yesterday with Joe as we were letterboxing. And it's true. It comes to a point where if you train regularly every second day or constantly every week, usually it's every second day, it comes to a point where if you don't, if you miss it, there's something not right. And my day doesn't, the day doesn't go the same. That's what we need with Bible reading, with, with knowing what God wants us to do. And we're only going to get it through here, through the Bible. So I pray people get saved and I pray people study the Bible and have a desire for the knowledge of his will. That's Bible. We're going to get to a bit more deeper than that as the verses go. But we're talking about getting facts, knowing what God wants me to do. And it doesn't stop there. Look, knowing, uh, sorry, filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Yeah, not only intellectual understanding. I know I say that and some people might not agree, but there's a difference between reading the Bible intellectually only and only getting facts about what it says. But what about, like I mentioned before, seeing Jesus Christ back in, in uh, the event of Abraham and Isaac? What about seeing Jesus Christ back where, where God says, I will provide my, himself, God will, prov Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. Intellectually speaking, you only see that as, oh, the situation Okay, God doesn't want Isaac to get sacrificed. So he's just going to provide a, a lamb for him, right? That's only one example that, that we've seen. But what it really means is God going to provide himself as Jesus Christ, the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the, of the world. That's what's going to happen. That was, that was from Genesis. And so intellectual is different to spiritual. And also in all wisdom. Uh... God gives wisdom liberally. Let's let's turn to uh, James chapter one. James chapter one verse five. James is after Hebrews. James chapter one and verse five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. See that? God provides, he gives it, he provides wisdom generously, generously. You can you can ask as much as you want, but you gotta ask. You can't just you, you gotta want it. You gotta say, hey, please, Lord. That's why we pray. We pray so we can ask. And so this one, I, I heard this this um, verse uh, as a young Christian. And because I need a lot of wisdom, I, I constantly was praying for wisdom because I, I need a lot to read and, and to get over the, the things that I missed in school. And upbraideth not. He's not going to criticize you for asking or thinking that you, you need it. No one is. We all need the wisdom and the wisdom of God, the wisdom that comes from God, and it shall be given. That's a promise. It will. It shall be given to, to you when you ask for wisdom. So back to Colossians. So when you read it together, be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let's remember the rule of thumb that uh, is, is good to go by with verses. You have one verse that you don't quite understand. So many people think, uh, okay, um, when Jesus talks about eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Um, one verse or one passage does not, an unclear verse or passage never overrides multiple verses and passages that don't fit with that. So... So, for example, I'm choosing a, a, a pretty difficult example, but it's the only one that came to mind. 
Eat my flesh and drink my blood. We need some wisdom and spiritual understanding for that, right? The subject of that passage is the bread of life. It's the bread of life that Jesus Christ is talking about. And the context he's talking about is bread, right? And so his body and his blood, just simply now, he's talking about taking part of him, taking total part of him. And the context is always bread of life. And you can cross-reference to the manna that fell from heaven. That goes on and on and on. But we don't go and say, oh, Jesus, and like the like many of the disciples did and the many hearers, oh, Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's a hard saying. We can hear it. And they left him. And they didn't walk with him no more. So they didn't really, number one, they didn't believe Jesus for who he said he was. If they did, they would have stayed with him, even though they didn't understand. And you don't throw away all the verses talking about in the Old Testament that it's uh, witchcraft and it's evil and it's wicked to drink blood. Yeah, It's obviously not something that a Christian would do. So you need some wisdom and spiritual understanding to go searching for it. Another, another point is, don't always ask. Try to take some things and go search for it for yourself. Because sometimes when you always ask and ask, and you can ask whatever you want with me, but I'm saying what I learned too, when someone always shows me, they show me and then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And then pack the Bible away and forget about it. But when I search for it, which is study to show thyself approved, when I search, and where is man? How can I find this? And then I finally find it. There it is. There it is. Isaiah 44. I'll never forget that again. Right? So not always asking. And I'm not saying asking is wrong. But of course, try and find it for yourself. And then when, when there's an issue, then you can ask someone. But that's a good habit to get into. So remember, one unclear verse never overrides 50, 100, multiple other verses that will help you with predestination that will help you with that will help you with a lot of topics that people trip over yeah mm -hmm. the bible never contradicts itself yeah one unclear verse it's not unclear from our human perspective sounds like it is right. but when you compare scripture to scripture you can't throw away 50 verses just because one says something so keep Keep that in mind. That was a great help for me. So, um, knowledge of his will in all wisdom. That's part of the wisdom and spiritual understanding. Pray before you read. I can't stress that enough. Pray before and after you read. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need guidance from God. And so, you we need to pray before. Yeah, it's not all study and facts. We need to pray before we read so we can get that spiritual understanding. Verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, so we'll start at walk worthy. What's that? So we've gathered the knowledge of his will. We've working on our wisdom we're working on our spiritual understanding now what do we do that you may walk we need some motion we need some action it's no use just sitting there reading gathering wisdom gathering knowledge and not doing anything we need to walk we shared on wednesday night jesus told the impotent man by the pool rise carry thy bed and walk a few verses later where was he he was in the temple. So this man walked. He went to the temple seeking God because he knew God healed him. I want to know more about this God, right? So uh, walk worthy. So we're not only walking, yeah? We're not, it's not only a, a motion and an action. Uh, Jesus, uh, Paul says here, and he tells us, the Holy Spirit tells us to walk worthy worthy is your walk worth something to god is that actually worth something or are we doing like 
Mother Teresa where a whole bunch of good works and it's not really worth anything. Mm. It's the souls of men that is worth something to God. And so we want to share the gospel so that their souls can come from darkness unto the light of Jesus Christ. So that's worth something. That's, that's worth something to God. Walk, walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Our goal is that we are all pleasing to God. Did I please God with anything today? At the end of the day, when you sit down to rest, did I please God today? Did I walk worthy of Him today? Did I do anything that is worth something for the cause of Christ? Proverbs 11.20. Last cross-reference, I think. Proverbs. Go back to the Old Testament. And we're going, your, your Bible runs Psalms. Goes from it, the middle of your Bible is Psalms. Move towards Revelations and you'll find Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20. They that are of a froward heart are an abom abomination to the Lord. But such as are upright in their way are his delight. That's, that's a blessing. Yeah? Being a delight to God Almighty, that that directly coincides with Colossians, what we're talking about, walking worthy and pleasing God. See, they that are a froward heart, you know what that is? They're always in the habit of disobedience and opposition. These people that are always asking questions, uh, uh, like I said, questions is good, but always opposition, just in opposition to every little thing that is said. That's, that's, that's not what, God here is saying to do. Froward hearts are in their heart. They always want to argue. Always opposition to everything that is said. They that are of a froward heart are an abomination to the Lord. No good. But, but there is hope. But such, such as are upright in their way are His delight. That's what we want to That's our goal. That's what we want to do. We want to live upright. And have God delight in us. That's that's great because He, after all, He's our Lord. If you're a saved Christian, He's our Lord, right? And we want we want to be a delight to our Master. So I want Him to take a delight in my walk. So verse back to Colossians chapter one verse ten. That ye might walk worthy. Of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. And I know it's not always fruitful. Sometimes there's times of nothing. And genuine salvation is actually very hard to come by. So the Bible's not always only talking about saving people coming to the Lord and getting saved. Being fruitful is what we're doing among Christians. Among the church, people growing, people learning things and taking them in, like and understanding there can't be any agenda. We're just going by what the Bible says. And so being fruitful, all of us growing. And so uh, Paul is saying uh, he, wa he wants them to have a, a desire. See, there's nothing wrong to have a desire to be fruitful. We want people to get saved. We want Christians to grow. And we want to grow all together so that we can get stronger and not just come to church on a Sunday and 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 then go back home. We want to we want a part of our lives and we want to be part of each other's lives. So bringing forth fruit uh, in every good work and increasing here. We're going to increase in the knowledge of God. Notice. Verse 9, it talks about the knowledge of His will. And then here in verse 10, it talks about the knowledge of God. That's the knowledge of God Himself. Now, now we're getting somewhere. This knowledge of God is not only talking about 
okay in genesis god created he created everything okay and then he taught a few things through the old testament and then now uh he sent jesus down on the cross and then revelations uh, he's coming back that's it that's that's not it most of the people that you come across know that this is increasing in the knowledge of god after we've done all the things we've just spoken about there's a difference between gathering facts about god and increasing in the knowledge of god himself knowing him and the more you get to know him see his his ways he you, you can't just say uh, i know him we don't need to know anymore the more you read the more you you dive into the word of god and the more you have a relationship with him the more you're gonna see have you ever been out at night and looked on the stars at first you don't see many but if you stay there and keep looking more you, your eyes start adjusting and the, the stars get brighter and you start seeing more and you're like wow i didn't see that many when i first came out here that's exactly what what happens when you look into the word of god even the simplest of verses you'll come across it 20 years later and you'll say man i knew that verse inside out where did that come from and so increasing in the knowledge of not only his word and his will but god himself knowing there's a so knowing there's a god somewhere that gave 10 commandments that told me not to steal and kill there's a difference between that and being able to sit somewhere for 30 minutes just in fellowship with god just in fellowship with god just like we're going to have fellowship now after church there's a big difference between those two and so um it's very dangerous i believe to treat the bible as a bunch of facts and not really take in the knowledge of who god is because you know what happens when you disobey what god says you're gonna think that you're just disobeying a bunch of facts and there's no really relationship there with god so that's it's very important that it's the bible's not just a bunch of facts of things that happen events there's very important to have a relationship as you read the word of god have that devotion and have that relationship with god himself because god is real he's with us all the time through work through family through recreation we got to remember that we've got to remember that very important god help us to be, to get beyond the knowledge just about god and to increase in the knowledge of god himself now that's that's very important almost there verse 11 so notice there's no full stop yet so they're still paul and timothy they're still praying they're saying we're praying for you to have the desire knowledge of his will wisdom spiritual understanding walk worthy fruitful knowledge of god himself and here what does that result in strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness so that, that's that's probably the hardest verse here in chapter one so paul and timothy want them to be strengthened let's turn that backwards so when you claim you have no strength that comes from a lack of understanding of his might and his glorious power that is available to us as christians yeah so when we say we're weak we are not taking into account the glorious power that god has for us strengthened with all might according to his glorious power not mine so it's okay to say i don't have enough strength me that's okay but to say that god doesn't have enough strength that's wrong god it says here has glorious power not of my the power of myself so we we need to be strengthened because when you're weak that's when we fall 
And so we need to be strengthened according to his glorious power, not our own. And so when we fail to do that, you know what your testimony is. Your testimony is saying that he doesn't have enough power to help me through X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. So remembering God's glorious power, we just spoke about the knowledge of God and how much power does God have, yeah? Over all principalities and powers. Unto all patience. Patience is pretty easy. It's it's okay. You know, it doesn't cost you really anything but time and you got to wait for a while and have patience, you know. But now when we get into long suffering, long suffering is patience until it hurts. Yeah? Long suffering is patience while hurting and patience while suffering and still having having that what does it say with joyfulness now we're talking about something that god just turned spiritual on us yeah so not only patience not only long suffering see long suffering could be financial distress it could be physical pain where you're waiting for healing and sometimes that healing doesn't come even as Christians there's a lot of Christians in hospital with leukemia, tumours all of this but that doesn't mean anything if they're Christian on the way to heaven then uh, uh, they're going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord it doesn't matter if they're sick they're still joyful and that's what that's why this, this verse is is pretty pretty hard because patience and long suffering while joyful that's hard when you look at it humanly but we just spoke of the the first part of the verse is according to his glorious power so when you look at it from god's point of view it's absolutely possible but when you look at it from a human perspective how could i be happy joyful while hurting and suffering uh, for a long time, long suffering. How, how can I do that? That's it. That's impossible from a human point of view. And only the people that have gone through something like this can relate to how hard it is. But if you haven't gone through something like this, like where you need patience and extra, extra long suffering, be prepared because it's coming. It comes to all of us. And so... Um, I believe it's a test of uh, building up the Christian character. It's a test of God that you make sure that you're used to being patient and being long-suffering. Because, fellow Christian, the last thing you want to do is lose your joy. And that's why the verse says, with joyfulness. When, when a Christian starts losing their joy, that's the danger zone. Yeah? And I'm not talking about always walking around happy, happy, clappy, and always smiling. Yeah, that, that, that's outward. Joyful comes from inside. I could be, I can look, most people do tell me I look angry sometimes, but it's, that's just the, yeah, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. That's just my look. But you can't see the inside. I'm actually joyful. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. And then some people the other way around look joyful, but from the inside, not happy at all. And so very dangerous for a Christian to lose their joy because that's where it starts. And the fall starts after that, if you don't recoup. And so Paul is praying that this church in Colossae get used to being patient and they get used to long suffering. Not only that, with joyfulness while they're full of joy because the ministry is not all roses yeah it's not all happy and that we have a great time of fellowship and that but i can imagine with each one of you individually from monday to saturday it's not all joyful yeah <laughs> but it is if you keep your eyes looking unto jesus that is joyful and so Let's combat and battle this verse 11 because 
humanly speaking, it's pretty hard. So let's let's attack. Verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. See that straight away, uh, Paul says, don't suck about verse 11. Yeah, don't, don't get upset. You have to be patient along suffering. Because if you start giving thanks to what he to the Father for what He has already done, then what do you got to complain about? Now there's no big deal, which hath made us meet. It is fitting that we be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. You know what that is? That's being partakers of what Christ has. We already have received that. We spoke about a few weeks. A few weeks ago about the prodigal son and the older brother. They received part of their inheritance because the father was still alive. We have received part of our inheritance because we're still alive. But we have received the answer that everyone's looking for in life. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Eternal life. Mm -hmm. We've received that. I can walk up to anyone and share the gospel with them and tell them for certain the death, burial, and resurrection is your answer. Right. It's up to you to choose. That's 100%. The best counseling in the world comes from Jesus Christ. Not from me. I'm just the postman. But that's the best counseling that anyone can have. And it's free. It doesn't cost per hour. Maybe we should start, start charging per hour. But it doesn't cost a cent. The best counseling. And it worked on me and everyone that is saved here it worked on all of us you're missing out yeah to be a partaker of the inheritance of jesus christ man that's missing and we already got some and we're gonna get more so when you think of whatever it is yeah that you need patience and long suffering think of that in your mind now we're gonna do a little magic trick Think of that in your mind now. Whatever you need patience and long-suffering for, think of it. Whether it's finance, pain, whatever. I don't know. Whatever. I got one. I need patience and long-suffering for this. Now think of what the Father has given us and what He's going to give us and how we're partakers of the saints in light. And we're partakers of what Jesus Christ had. Now, what was that you were thinking of? The, the patience and long-suffering for? I think it's gone. As a Christian, as a Christian, it should be gone. Whatever you're thinking of the patient long-suffering compared to being partakers of God's inheritance, I think it just disappeared. Now, what was that I was complaining about? Forget it, Lord. Don't worry about it. Let's just rejoice. Let's just be full of joy. Let's just know, grow in the knowledge of God. Let's just do that. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Total from one place to another. God has translated us. He's taken us totally from the power of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Total, total, just like that. Just by someone receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Receiving the death, burial, and resurrection. And we're going to come up to the blood here. Yeah. And so now, look how Paul shifts. Yeah. So he's shifted to, okay, verse 11, a bit hard. And then verse 12, now giving thanks to the Father. And now he's shifting to what he has done, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to uh, the kingdom of his son. And so these two and the next verse are direct attacks to verse 11. This is how we kill patience, long suffering, and any complaints we got to come up with anything else we thank god the father for the inheritance and we remember that he delivered us from the power of dark, darkness and translated us to his king to the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That's how he took us from one place, power of darkness, to total translation to the kingdom of his dear son. Because he redeemed us in whom we have redemption. Yeah, we have redemption. And we're still giving thanks here, right? You usually go to a shop, yeah, and you usually buy things that you want. Yeah, you have a hundred dollars and you walk past many things that you can buy with a hundred dollars, and you usually end up picking something up and you want to spend a hundred dollars and you look and you say yes a hundred dollars and then you'll make a decision do i want to pay a hundred dollars for this or do i put it back on the shelf usually people just buy what they want right and spend what they agree to that's redeemed we only buy what we need and what we agree on the price of But God, yeah, it says here, he actually bought something he didn't really need. A sinner? He bought a sinner. And he, there's no, he doesn't really need that. And he actually paid top dollar, dollar for it. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son. He paid not all the gold and silver in the world right sin you, you can't buy that you can't buy back a sinner with gold and silver you you can't even see god created everything yeah he couldn't even say okay what about the mountains the ocean and that let's let's use that to buy back the sinner let's use that to redeem no it's not going to do anything even you know, that's part of our inheritance and it's still nothing. Can't buy the sinner back with any of that. No material, not even the creation. God had to redeem the sinner by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It cost blood. It cost blood to buy sinners. And let's have a look quickly which blood this was. Let's go to Acts 20:28. 20, Acts. What does the Bible say? We know it says many times the Bible talks about blood. But here's a blessing that I found this verse. That that I well, I heard a preach, not that I found, but when I came across it, what a blessing that this came for me. To really pinpoint the blood of Jesus Christ and the, the price that it that, that it cost. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers. Very important to, to very important to take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Understand that or not, the verse says that's God's blood. Mm. Doesn't matter about understanding. It says to feed the church of God, which he, God, hath purchased with his own blood. That's, that's what we're talking about here, not an inheritance. The Christian is saved, is redeemed by the blood of God. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed. We just sang it to wash away our sins and nothing else could pay for that. Nothing in the whole world could pay for that. The stars, the moon, the ocean, the mountains, gold, silver, nothing else could pay for that but the blood of Jesus Christ. On that note, let's bow in the words of